Now before this mono wheel is going to break my head, it's time to break into one of these mono wheels as we have got a bunch of them and most of them are not in proper working condition because of the fact that these mono wheels are manufactured back in 2016. So 5 years and the BMS has probably drained all the lithium ion battery pack and that's why most of them are not even turning on. So I guess it's a perfect time to convert one of these bad mono wheels into something that can generate power for us to charge our battery packs and it's time to get into one of them and let's see what we have got inside. A mono wheel like this consists of three main components. First one of which is a brushless alternator motor that houses within the tire of this mono wheel. Now that's something that we are going to use for today's project video so we are going to talk more on that later on in this video. The rest of the two components houses on either compartment of the casing. On this side we have got a brushless speed controller that controls the speed of the brushless alternator motor depending upon the tilt angle which is sensed by an onboard gyroscope. While on the other side we have got a lithium ion battery pack that's currently I guess dead. So before we guess any further let's undo all those screws and see what exactly we have got inside. This battery pack is made up of 18 650 cells, 16 of them, all of them connected in series to produce around 70 volt DC. Now keep that figure in mind as we are going to later refer it in our project video. Our multimeter is showing that this battery pack is almost dead and it's obvious because this mono wheel is built in 2016. 5 years and that's enough for a BMS to drain all the lithium ion battery packs. Uh, the other thing that we have got is a sensored brushless speed controller but the thing is that we are not going to need any of the parts that we have got on the right side. The thing that we are going to need for this project is our brushless alternator motor so let's get inside of it and talk about what we have got in there. Now don't get confused as I'm going to explain you what's going on in there. We usually come across these brush DC motors that have their coils attached to the shaft of the motor and that's why usually the shaft of these brush DC motors is spin while the magnets that are attached to the stator remains stationary. Now as you can see we have got a pair of brushes attached to these terminals so that they can supply the direct current to the coils through the commutator which alternates DC current in order to alternate the magnetic field and that's why these brush DC motors keep spinning their shaft. On the other end we have got these brushless alternator motors and as the name says the outer part of the motor spins and brushless means obviously these motors don't have any brushes causing them to be more efficient and the current between the coils alternate using a brushless speed controller. Now as you can see these brushless motors have got their coils on the stationary part of the motor which in this case is the shaft of the motor and the outer drum has got permanent magnet that is spins. Usually these brushless alternator motors have comparatively more torque than the in runner brushless motor that have got coils on the outer side while the router has the permanent magnet that makes an in runner brushless motor spins. Now as you can see we have got quite a bunch of coils in there and 
since it's a large motor so it has low kv rating which means that the rpm per volt of this motor is very low compared to an in runner brushless motor and that's the fact that this motor is going to be really useful for us in order to generate sufficient amount of energy on a relatively slower speed so first of all we are going to attach ice pocket to this plate and then we are going to repack the motor removing the tire that we are not going to need for this project so let's get this done Since our generator is ready to produce some electricity, so it's time to build a frame to hold everything together. And for that, we are going to use 14 gauge U shaped metal tubes to build the whole frame. Now to keep the base stable we are going to use some rubber pads and for that Mujtaba is drilling 8mm holes. So we are done with the framing that's going to hold everything together. As you have seen everything was previously galvanized but since we have welded and buffed all the parts they might get rusted at some other points plus this pipe is bare so what we are doing here is to spray paint everything and we have started from the bottom and now we are getting to the top so that everything looks good and is rust protected so finally the paint has dried and we have got all the parts that's needed to complete our project and along with that we have got all the tools that needs to get these parts in place we'll start from the bottom and get to the top and hopefully by the end of the day we are going to produce some useful power out of this exercise machine This project turned out to be way better than what we have expected. 
it's generating a three phase output which is not that much stable so before we stabilize the output we need to convert the three phase alternating output into direct current output so that we can treat it through a bug boost converter later on now as professionally as this bike is done we are going to design and build a rectifier unit and here i would love to thank glc pcb for helping us do that as we wanted once the design files are up all we need to do is to go through a bunch of options and we are all set to order our customized printed circuit boards well glc pcb is one of the largest pcb manufacturer around the globe providing finest quality services ranging from single layer up to six layer customized printed circuit boards manufacturing and their assembly at a fraction of price right at your doorstep we have been using their services for our diy projects for the last three years and believe me there have not been a single glitch in their services so we do highly recommend them the link to their website is in the description below so be sure to check it out So with the rectify unit installed, we have successfully converted three phase alternating current into direct current. The capacitors are charged, that's why it's showing some of DC voltages right on multimeter. And as you can see, as I rotate the pedal, the voltages are going up and up and up. Obviously, the speed is not going to be consistent. So to stabilize this DC output, what we are going to use is a boost converter and then later we are going to test this exercise machine by charging a battery pack. So next to the rectifier unit we have got a watt meter to monitor the amount of power we are going to generate and here is our boost converter unit. Now we are going to charge the battery pack from our bicycle and that's nearly 2 kilowatts of battery pack and uh, it's rated at around 42 volts. So hopefully we'll get some power into the battery pack so that by pedaling our exercise machine we are later going to uh, use that power out of our bicycle. Later each one of us pedaled the bike for exactly one minute. Which might not sound a lot but actually it was a challenging task to keep pedaling as our brushless motor slash generator produced sufficient output at such a low speed. To our surprise we were roaming around 200 watts of average output and as we pushed to our limits, we achieved a peak of whooping 409 watts, which is amazing. The reason to which is the fact that these brushless alternative motors are generally efficient generator at such slow speeds. This exercise machine is good as far as our fitness is concerned, but to produce useful output, we might end up using it in our DIY wind generator, or who knows, we might end up coupling it with our four stroke engine that's laying in our workspace. For those project videos, do subscribe and hit the bell icon, and we'll see you soon.